O2 So here we will look for something actually quite interesting in terms of the kind of results that we can get with this algorithm. Okay. So again we will only consider initially fixed capacity service centers and delay centers. Okay. So this algorithm is now considers right now only these two. So, basically a single server queues or uh, infinite server queues, one or infinity, nothing else in between. So, this result goes back to 19 goes back to 1967 from Gordon Newell theorem. Out of that distribution of the number of jobs in a queuing network. So, the theorem basically states as follows, right. So, uh, given again a set of queues, right, given a with exponential service times, etcetera. Then let us let n denote this vector. Right. So this denotes n denotes the number of uh, at a given instant of time there are n one customers in Q one or n one jobs in Q one, n two jobs in Q two, and n m jobs in Q one. Right. This is the number of so n i is the number of jobs in device or Q i. at some instant of time. So, then the probability that, so what is the probability that for some given n right, and a given system. this is turns out to be simply so it's proportional to the it is equal to the product of each demand raised to the corresponding value of n so d1 raised to the power n1 d2 power n2 and so on dm to the power nm unfortunately i am proving that the book skipped the proof, I went and looked at, we can go back and look at the original paper for the proof, but you may sit here for, right. So, we are only looking at the result here, because it is convenient, okay. So, now I have, so now we remember in the case of M M 1, right, what is the state of the system, what did you model the state of the system, simply the number of customers and once I know my P i's, right, I could compute everything else based on that with the results law and so on. So, likewise now I have this probability with which I can now compute with many other things in the system, right. So, this is the probability of having at a given point in time these many customers in each of these queues and it is just proportional to d, which is d again is equal to v into s, right, d i equals v i into s i, that is uh, what we saw defined last time. d is the demand, yeah, okay. So, we will where we will write this. first I put something n right. So, n is simply the total number of customers in the system like we always had and then d i is the the demand made on device i which we have defined so far as v i and s i. If you look at other definitions they will use either E i as visit ratio right divided by mu i because it is exponential 1 over mu i is your service time. Right. So, 
There is also a normalizing factor. So, there if you look at uh, it will be simply 1 minus rho into rho 1 to the n right. So, where rho is basically lambda by mu right. So, and but here that there lambda is the arrival right here that um, lambda is sort of like your uh, visit count to the system right. If it is a tandem queue we saw that it is simply product of right of the individual queues. It is something similar to that, and then there is this normalizing constant because of the fact that d and n d can be very large, right? D can be any number. It is not constrained by. In the case of mm one, we said it rho is less than one, so we know that we can always compute that, right? Whereas d is very large, to compute this becomes a problem. Right? If d is thousand, then thousand to the power n is also very large. You start looking at very large numbers, right? Then your system starts running starts running into either overflow or underflow errors. If d is very small you run into underflow errors, if d is very large you run into overflow errors especially for large values of n, but this is the formula right this is proved and so now I can use this to right figure out certain things ok. So, then I have defined my g of n, so g of n is a so normalizing constant I need this to ensure that all the probabilities are summing up to 1 and that they are all less than equal to 1. So, this is simply sigma over all possible values of n right every combination of n So, to avoid this computation problem we can look at two ways right if d is very large then but the good thing is the d's are again appear in the denominator right. So, I can simply scale the d's to whatever value that I want right. So, one way to reduce the computation right to reduce the computation uh, errors right overflow etcetera. I will simply choose uh, select right some scaling factor alpha alpha usually less than 1 right <coughs> and then rewrite or of course if the d's are very small then it will scale them up right so it depends right if uh, all d's are right Are all greater than one, you know, to scale it to some number less than one, right? And if it is uh, too small, then scale it up to property. For example, S in a service service time, right? In a gigabit net a system, your packet transmission time will be out of nanoseconds. So, VISI will be very, very, very small, and then you are trying to, in that case, you want to just scale it up to, uh, right, some multiple. <coughs> so, we now express everything in terms of this YI. YI is nothing but alpha into. And alpha can be anything, you can just pick the largest uh, you know uh, value of d, whatever it is. This is you know, even if it is not greater than one, you can still use that for in, uh, in some situations, but anyway. <coughs> or if you want to just normalize everything to integers, also you can try to do that if things are nicely set up as multiples of integers, ok. So, for example, alpha I can uh, use the so called d average. I can use that right or I may just say that I will scale everything with respect to d max. So, d max goes to 1 and everything else is less than 1. So, something of that sort or any other arbitrary value right. So, then now my p of n which is the same expression that we saw before is nothing but
So, instead of expressing it in terms of g of uh, d, we are expecting expressing it in terms of y. So, now let us go back to our the same system with the q right 1 CPU 2 disks closed network. Okay. And let us uh, assume that S CPU is 39 milliseconds S A is 180 S B is 260 and then V C P U is again given to you So, your D C P U is now this is in milliseconds. So, we will just put everything in seconds D A is two point three four. So, everywhere there is some thirteen hiding, right. So, so, let alpha be 0.78. So, therefore, y c p u equals 1, y a equals 3, y b equals y a is alpha d i. So, divide everything by 0.78 to get it. y i equals, no I am sorry. One hour. correct or not. Okay. So, now let us assume that there are is a closed network right. So, let us say that there are total of 3 jobs in the system and that is all I am considering right. Closed network with 3 jobs. So, what is the probability of right certain number right, 1 job in um, this q 2 in the other q and so on. So, because there are 3 jobs there would have been assume that there is no terminal here there is no thinking time. So, z equals 0. Okay. So, there is there is no terminal at all it is just these 3 q's the ob these um, jobs are just switching between these 2 q's right. Okay. So, now I can enumerate right if I want to find out. So, what is the probability what are the different ways in which these 3 jobs can be distributed among these 3 q's. So, what are the total number of what are the total uh, combinations for this um, n right. I said n is the set of all possible right state combinations 4 c 2 okay. so that equals 4 c 2 4 c 2 4 uh, 3 jobs 3 q's 3 jobs 3 q's 1 before c 2. 
So, I have 3 jobs distributed among 3 queues, right. So, what is the common to rate? Did not you get this look at it somewhere, right. <coughs> so, the number of possible states So, I have n objects right that can be in m queues that can be distributed among m queues. So, what is the number of ways in which you can do that 5 c 2 ok good. So, how did you get that put 2 partitions in ok. So, that is basically can you give that to me in terms of n and m. R of course n right. M minus, M minus 1 if it is easier if you think about in terms of the partitions right. So, this is the number of ways in which number of possible states. And yeah, so you I guess I found this explanation. So, if you represent your uh, set of jobs as dots, right. So, this is the n dots that you have, right. And then you are basically partitioning this into m sets, right. You can you can put so you basically have bars to represent your boxes. I have m minus 1 boxes, right. So, I can put let us say m equals 2, right, or m equals 3. In our case, I need to draw 3 bars to basically split um, I have in this case n equals 8 and m equals 3 right. So, now I have to look at these 2 bars and so where I can place them I can place them in right any one of these. So, it is uh, n plus m minus 1 positions are there right I can and then um, you have m minus 1 choices or, uh, so you have to uh, select m minus 1 positions out of the n plus m minus 1 position possible. That is how you get that, okay. That you can check it out later, right. Just take this for granted. So, there are so these many combinations, okay. So, what is this of the order of what is the order complexity for this? So, if you have to compute this, right, this many states, the number of states is how much? The order of n to the power m minus 1, so or n to the power m that many states are there that again you can verify. So, in our example right for n equals 3 m equals 3 possible states this is 10. So, you have to enumerate 10 possible states ok. Why do I have to enumerate all 10 possible? Because I have to compute g of n, right? g of n is the summation of over all n, which is uh, the y i to the power n i. So, I basically have to have, a, have one big table that actually does that, okay. So, let us uh, compute some parts of this table, okay. So, let this is the number of uh, items in the CPU, number of items in disk A, number of items in disk B. And uh, right, this is your y i's that we are <coughs> sorry, y i's we already have known. So, this is this, and then right for this combination, we can look at the So, for every combination you have to go and figure out this y i to the power n i right and uh, y i is we figure out to be 1, 3 and 2. So, when this is one possible distribution right all the 3 jobs are in the disk B. So, what is the corresponding product here 8 and we can just do this for the rest of this class, but then I put 0 here 1, 2, 0, 2. One, then I have zero three zero. Okay. 
and this is now 3 to the power 1 2 square uh, this is 3 to the power 2 9 into 2 18 yeah. and so forth until we look at the final combination is 3 0 0 because the fact y 1 equals 1 this just sums up to be So, remember my g of n is summation of all this y i which is 90. Once I compute g of n then my formula says right p of n equals this product divided by g of n. So, what is this? This is 8 by 90 that equals 0.089 this is 12 by 90 and so forth. Dot, dot, dot. So, that is how I compute the computer. So, given a system I have to go back write a small program to do this right only worrying about overflow or underflow, but I can do that. I am sorry. No, the alpha does not come in this picture because alpha is already in the denominator and the numerator. Why i is reduced and likewise you are so both numerator and denominator both reduced by alpha. Right. So, you do not need to reduce this further. We use alpha later on when we come to the actual through matrix we will have to use alpha to scale it back to the original values ok. So, that is one way of computing right. <coughs> there is another way of computing g of n m do you know what that is. So, given n and m we can compute g n m faster. So, ok let us do that. So, let um, is defined this way then we can actually prove this but I will keep that for some other time as we get to get moving so the number okay so your g and k right So, g and k this is a right expression that ties up these two. So, this simply says that in the particular q k, q k that you are looking at there is no job. So, all the n jobs are sitting in the k minus 1 q's right there is one tag q k that you are looking at. So, it is either all the jobs are in the other q's k minus 1 q's or there is one job which is this y k and then the remaining n minus 1 jobs are still across all the k q's right. So, one of those jobs you are looking at putting them in this q. So, there is just one job you are tagging and then that is either in this kth q or not in this kth q and this pro this is the probability ok. So, this is our side this is your g So, why this is useful is now I can actually compute my g of n's um, much faster right with the simple set of multiplications and additions ok. So, now let us define some boundary conditions right. So, what is g of n comma 0 equal to? How many ways can you distribute n objects in 0 q's? No, 0. So, this is boundary. And then, how many ways can you distribute 0 objects in k q's? 
exactly one way right all 0 for all k equal So, now we construct a table with n plus 1 rows and technically m plus 1 columns, but we do not worry about that <coughs> m columns and proof is there in the book right how we can do this grouping for a simple 3 this uh, 3 q 3 customer case we can actually come up with So now my table essentially looks like this. And this is basically So, we are assume that the table has this row values. Okay. So, the number of ways of distributing 0 jobs, right. So, we said that 0 this is 1 and then so we will initialize these two initial uh, the first row and the first column. This is y 1 So, there is only one q right the first column simply says there is only one q and there are n elements. So, the therefore all a for all n i right the corresponding will simply y i to the power n i there is no other q to be considered in the system right that is your these are your initial conditions right. We know that 0 customers in n q's whatever be the number of q's is the probabilities or g of n the right g is 1 and if there is only one q it is simply y 1 raised to the power n 1. So, that is how these two columns are generated. So, now we just simply use our previous expression right. So, you look at the it is um, yeah. So, let us look at some. So, there is y k here right this is your k -th column <coughs> that is also 1. So, what do you have? You have g this is the nth row right. So, your g n k minus 1 comes from your previous column, and then you have g n minus 1 k from your previous row right and this is my this is simply So, how many computations now? N m right, when every computation is simply an addition and a multiplication. So, that is how I can build my this is I think Boozen's algorithm and then finally, you compute g. So, without having to enumerate you simply have n m computations. In the previous case you have to do all the n plus m minus 1 choose n options. Now, you do not have to do that you can just compute this this way right. So, you fill up this one then you can fill up this one. So, you can fill row by row. So, as you go along g of 1 or uh, g of 1 comma m right g of 2 comma m everything is getting generated. And we also we will find that g n minus 1 is also right. This g n m is basically what we are looking for g of n right. Mm. 
So, this will be y 1 plus y 2 here. Not power, simply multiply. This is y 1 plus y 2. 1 into y 2 plus y 1. This will be it is this simply comes as it is only the one coming above is gets multiplied by another value of y k. So, that makes sense right, because you are multiplying you are raising things to the power. So, your y k is uh, getting added there. Okay. So, we will have one more step and then we will go to that axiom that people wanted. Okay. So, can you compute this for n equals 3 m equals 3. Since this is one, this is very simple, right? So, one plus four into three, thirteen, thirteen plus um, six into two, twenty five, then one plus thirty nine is forty, forty plus fifty. So, in the process we also computed what if two jobs are placed in three queues, okay, the g of 2 is basically 25 and one job placed in three queues also is simply six different ways of doing that or the g of n is basically six. So, we will come back next class and look at actually how we can derive some of the terms, but since there was a request to see whether the axiom runs or not. So, next 20 minutes I am going to just check out the axiom and hopefully it runs right otherwise I am. So, just as a right teaser. So, if we want to find out the utilization of q i that is simply given by Well, again, we can derive this from one known expression, right? So, for example, so if I'm looking at the UCPU utilization of the CPU is how much? Y i is one, right? And G n minus one is twenty five. Twenty five by ninety. That is your UCPU. We can go back and check with uh, MEA if you want the other calculation. So, essentially everything gets proportional to di and this ratio of g n minus 1 to g n, all the utilization, q utilization. So, once you get u, then you can compute other things, right. Then SI can compute, which is SI by 1, 1 minus ui, right, and so on. 